If I ran the zoo by Dr. Zeus, it's a pretty good zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, and the fellow who runs it seems proud of it too. But if I ran the zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, I'd make a few changes. That's just what I do. The lions and tigers and that kind of stuff they have up here now and are not quite good enough. You see things like these in just any old zoo. They are awfully old-fashioned. I want something new. So I'd open each cage, I'd unlock every pan, let the animals go and start over again. And somehow or other I think I could find some beasts of a much more unusual kind. A four-footed lion's not much of a beast. The one in my zoo will have ten feet at least. Five legs on the left and five more on the right. Then people would stare and they'll say, What a sight! The zookeeper, new keeper, Gerald's quite keen. That's the cold darnest lion I've ever seen. My new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will make people talk. My new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will make people gawk. At the strangest odd creatures that ever did walk. I'll get for my zoo a new sort of hen who roosts in another hen's top knot and then another one roosts in the top knot of his and another in his and another in his and so forth and upward and onward gee wees. But that's just a start. I'll do better than that. They'll see me next day in my zookeeper's hat, coming into my zoo with an elephant cat. They'll be so surprised. They'll all swallow their gum. They'll ask when they see my strange animals come. Where do you suppose he gets things like that from? His animals all have such very odd faces. I'll bet he must hunt them in rather odd places. And that's what I'll do, said young Gerald McGrew. If you want to catch beasts you don't see every day, you have to go to places quite out of the way. You have to go places no other can get to. You have to get cold and you have to get wet too. Up past the North Pole with a frozen wind's squeal, I'll go and I'll hunt in my skiggle mobile and bring back a family of what do you know? And that's how my new zoo, Magruzu, will grow. I'll hunt in the mountains of Zombamatant with helpers who all wear their eyes at a slant and capture and find fluffy bird called the boosted, who only eats custard with sauce made of mustard, and also a very fine beast called the flustered, who only eats mustard with sauce made of custard. I'll catch them in caves and I'll catch them in brooks. I'll catch them in crannies. I'll catch them in nooks. That you don't read about in geography book. I'll catch them in countries that no one can spell, like the country of Motafa Potafapel. In a country like that, if a hunter is clever, he'll hunt up some beasts that you never saw ever. I'll load up five boats with a family of joats, 
whose feet are like cows but wear squirrel skin coats and sit down like dogs but have voices like goats is something they can't sing the very high notes and then I'll go down to the wilds of Nantucket and capture a family of lungs in a bucket then people will say now I like that boy heaps his newzu macruzu is growing by lips he captures them wild and he captures them meek he captures them slim and he captures them sleek what do you suppose he will capture next week I'll capture one tiny, I'll capture one good, I'll capture a deer that no hunter would shoot. A deer that's so nice, he could sleep in your bed, if it weren't for those horns that he has on his head. And speaking of horns that are just a bit queer, I'll bring back a very odd family of deer. A father, a mother, two sisters, a brother, whose horns are connected from one to another, whose horns are so mixed, they can't tell them apart, can't tell where they end and can't tell where they start. Each deer's mighty puzzled, he's never yet found, if his horns are hers or the other ways round. I'll capture them fat and I'll capture them scrawny. I'll capture a scraddle foot mulligatani. A high stepping animal fast as the wind. From the blistening sand of the desert of Zind. This beast is the beast that the prey chieftains ride when they want to go fast to find some place to hide. A mulligatani is fine for my zoo, and so is a chieftain, I'll bring one back too. If the far western part of southeast North Dakota lives a very fine animal called the Ayota, but I'll capture one who is even much finer in the northeastern west part of South Carolina. When people see him, they will call now by thunder. This new Magruzu is really a wonder. Most beasts are quite friendly, but still in some lands. Some beasts are too dangerous to catch with bare hands. For those that are ugly and vicious and mean, I'll build a bad animal catching machine. It's rather expensive to build such a kit, but with it, a hunter can even get bit. A zoo should have bugs, so I'll capture a thrill, whose legs are snarled up in a terrible snarl. And then I'll go out and I'll capture some chugs, some keen shooter, mean shooter, bean shooter bugs. I'll go to the African island of Yerka and bring back a tizzle top tuffled mazurka, a kind of canary with quite a tall throat. His, necks, his neck is so long if he swallows an oat. For breakfast the first day of April, they say, it has to go down such a very long way that it gets to his stomach the 15th of May. I'll bag a big bug who is very surprising, a feller who has a propeller for racing, and zooming around, making cross-country hops from Texas to, to Boston with only two stops. Now that sort of thing for a buck is just tops. And when I've caught him, then the next thing you know, I'll go and I'll capture a wild tic-tac-toe with X's that win and with zeros that lose. He'll look mighty good in this zoo of my grows. I'll bring back a cassette, a kirkin, a gasket and also a gooch from the wilds of Nantasket 
and eight Persian princes will carry the basket, but what their names are, I don't know, so don't ask it. In a cave in Khartoum lives a beast called the Notch, that no other hunter's been able to catch. He's hidden for years in his cave, the Pout, and no one's been able to make him come out. But I'll coax him out with a wonderful meal that's cooked by my cooks in my cooker mobile. They'll fix up a dish that is just so his taste three chicken croquettes made of library paste, then sprinkled with peanut shocks pickled and spiced, then baked at 600 degrees and then iced. It's mighty hard cooking to cook up such feasts. But that's how the new zoo, Magruzu, gets beasts. I'll go to the far away mountains of Tobsk, near the river of Norbsk, and I'll bring back an Obsk. A sort of, um, a kind of thing, a um, uh, Bobsk who only eats therbab and uh, corn on the Kopsk. Yeah, then people will flock to my zoo in a Mopsk. Magru, they will say, does a wonderful jobsk. He hunts with such whim, and he hunts with such vigor, his new zoo, Magru Zoo, gets bigger and bigger. And speaking of birds, there's Russian Pelosky, whose headsky is redsky and belly is bluesky. I'll get one of them for my Zuski Magruski. Then the whole town will gasp, why this boy never sleeps? No keeper before ever kept what he keeps. There is no telling what that young fellow will do. And then just to show them I'll sail to Katu, to Kataru, and bring back an itch, an itkach, a prip, and a pru, a nurkel, a nerd, and a seer sucker too. I'll hunt in the jungle of Hipponohungus and bring back a flock of wild Biponobungus. The Biponobungus from Hipponohungus are better than those down in Diponodangas and smarter than those out in Niponodangas. And that's why I'll catch them in Hiponohangas instead of those others in Nangas and Dungas. And people will say when they see these beeps bounding, the zookeeper, new zookeeper, simply outstanding. He travels so far that you think he would stop. When do you suppose this young fellow will stop? Stop? Well, I should. But I won't stop until I've captured the Fizama Wizama Deal, the world's biggest bird from the island of Gwork, who only eats pine trees and spits out the bark. And boy, when I get him back home, home to my park. The whole world will say young Magruz made his mark. He's built a zoo better than Noah's whole ark. These wonderful, marvelous beasts that he chooses have made him the greatest of all the Magruzes. Wow! They all cheer. What this zoo must be worth it's the gold darnest zoo on the face of the earth. Ah, yes, that's what I do, said young Gerald McGrew. I made a few changes if I ran the zoo. The end. <laughs>